Hello, welcome to the principles of assembly languages. Today's lecture is about tools complement, but it's actually more about how to represent values that are both positive and negative in hardware, right? So, so far we know how to write, you know, for example, uh, if I wanna write uh, 23 in decimal, so in hexadecimal, that could be, you know, this is 16 plus uh, 4 plus 3, so plus 7, I believe, right? So therefore, in hexadecimal is 1, 7, 17 in hex, right? So that's uh, easy. But now, what, what if I want to write minus 1 in decimal? How would that be in hexadecimal? Or how would that be in binary, I guess? Is, is the, the first question, right? And that's what today's lecture is about. How to represent numbers that are not only positive, but also negative, right? Um, how, how do we represent the numbers in hardware anyway? Um, so we're gonna look, look at different versions how to do that. So rather long time ago uh, in the mainframes such as IBM 360, uh, there was this format that's called the packed decimal numbers, right? So for example, if I want to uh, write number one, two, three, four, if I want to save that number, decimal, to memory, in memory, uh, then I would do something like uh, one, two, where each of those are hexadecimal digits, right? Uh, in one byte, and then three, four in another byte. Right. So if I were to convert that in binary, that would be 0001, 0010, and this would be 0011 and 0100, something like this. Right. So this, this is 1034 in a packed decimal format. Right. Nowadays, the computers don't don't use this kind of approach often because the problem is what if we need to do let's say addition or subtraction what if we need to do some sort of operations uh, arithmetic operations on this number it becomes a little bit difficult to do that uh, or we need to convert it first to to the raw binary form so to say right um, therefore Let's see if there are better ways how to do it. Because in this case, we could just encode minus as, as another, you know, uh, digit in, in, in hexadecimal, right? Because in hexadecimal, the digits go from zero till nine, which is fine for all the digits in decimal system. And then we have A, B, C, D, and E, which we could, you know, assign A for minus, for example, and things like that. Um, so let's see, let's see what's, uh, what other options are uh, out there, All right? But before that, let's talk about unsigned numbers. So unsigned numbers in registers are the numbers that are always positive, right? That we don't care about the sign. We only care about the positive value. Right? Now, what are the registers? For, so register, it's like a variable within the CPU. So CPU has has a bunch of very fast um, variables, registers, in so-called register file quite often, right? And that's like that's like variables that the CPU can operate with. Okay, from the programming perspective. From the hardware perspective, this is a very fast memory. Fast memory. And in order to make it fast uh we need to uh we need more space we need more hardware more transistors um and therefore it's going to be more expensive right so we're not driving for the volume here this is not a memory chip where we want to store you know megabytes and gigabytes of data on a single chip uh this is just uh, just a variable just a few variables maybe 32 maybe 16 depending on the uh chip we're going to talk more about it 
next the next lecture how many and what kind of registers we have but the idea is that that it's like a variable now we need to specify how big is a register so that we know how big of a number can we store in that variable right so um, it could be two bytes right it could be you know four bytes four bytes it could be eight bytes Sometimes we talk in bits, so this is a 32-bit architecture. Sorry, this one is, because it has 32 bits in the register. Uh, this is 16-bit architecture, right? There are 8-bit processors, the mi small microcontrollers, for example, that are good enough for small tasks and don't require a lot of uh, power to run them, right? All right. So, but what if the number is smaller than the size in the register, right? What if all we want to save is 3? So in binary, 3 is 11. But we have 8 bits. What do we do? We pad it on the left with zeros until the register is full. Okay? So we have 8 bits in total. The leftmost bits are all zeros. The rightmost bits represent the value. So that's an easy way to save, to encode unsigned numbers in registers. All right, any questions? Comments? Okay, now what about the signed numbers? So it turns out there are several ways. Right? One way we could do the sign magnitude, right? So let's say if I'm I'm trying to save one, one in decimal would be zero 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 one in one byte, right? In in binary. Okay. What if I want to do minus one in decimal? Then for the sign magnitude we could do well let's choose that this bit is going to be sine if it's negative we're going to use one if it's positive we're going to use zero and for the rest of the space we're going to use it for the value okay so we could do that now what what could be a problem with this approach any idea So the problem arises when we are trying to do arithmetic with this. So let's say I, I, I want to try 1 minus 1. Okay, so this is like 1 plus minus 1. What's going to be the result if I add them up? It should be 0, right? Now let's try with this approach. Let's say we have 0, 0, 0, 1. I'm just going to use 4 bits. It's going to be faster, but it should still drive the point well maybe I'm gonna use four bits later <laughs> since I started with eight bits and minus one is this one okay and if we add these guys together so this is one this is minus one then the result is going to be one plus one is zero and carry so one zero zero is one and then we have a bunch of zeros here and then 0 plus 1 is 1. Okay. So what we end up with, according to this scheme, this should be the sign bit, so this is going to be negative. And this is 1, 0, which is actually 2. So it turns out 1 minus 1 is minus 2. And, and this, is, this is not good. Okay? Not good. For the arithmetics. So therefore, what do we do? Uh, Let's look at different ways to encode negative numbers, such ways so that the arithmetic is sort of easier. Um, because we need to implement arithmetic in hardware, and the hardware should be small, efficient, cheap, and all those good things, right? So let's look at the once complement. So in, in, essentially, once complement is when we just reverse all the bits, okay? So therefore, from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, the ones complement minus one would be one 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 zero. Okay. 
So that that could be one idea. You know, if if the numbers is negative, we just invert everything. That's a very fast operation. Shouldn't be a problem, right? But again, if we add these guys together, minus one and one, then in this case we're gonna get one 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 one, right? Which happens to be what is it? Any idea? Um, if it's according to negative compromise, then it could be zero. It could be zero. It could be minus zero. I right? know. Yeah. Turns out there is this weird thing: plus zero and minus zero. So in this case, okay, fine. So it did work. Now let's try a different number maybe and see how it works. Now I'm gonna write shorter, right? Zero, zero, one, zero, so this is two. And then the minus two, so this is two. So the minus two would be one, one, zero, one, right? So let's try to add them up together, so that's fine too. That's also going to be minus zero, no problem here. Let's try to add up different values. Okay, let's try to add, uh, uh, what should we add? Um, let's try to add mm, mm, one and minus two, okay? So one is zero, 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 and minus two is one, one, zero, one, from what we figured out here. Let's add them up. Sorry, one is, 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 should end up with one, right? One plus one is zero and there is a carry. So here we're gonna have one. So here we have one, one, okay? So now this number, according to two's complement is what? It's gonna be negative. Minus, minus one. So this is minus one, right? Because what if we invert all of these guys is going to be zero, 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 one, right? So it's minus one. So one minus two is minus one. So this seems to work. So far we seem to be doing good, okay? Now what if we try minus one minus two, right? Is this going to work? Minus one is one, 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 zero. Minus two is one, one, zero, one, right? And then we add them together. It's going to be one, one, zero, and there is one for the carry, one, and then there is one for the carry, one. So looks like we have an overflow here. Uh, the result seems to be bigger than four bits now. But what's the actual value of this guy? So the actual value of this guy is going to be starts with one. So we need to invert it to get the value with the minus. So it's going to be. 0, 1, 0, 0, which is the same as 4. So this is 4, so therefore this one is minus 4. Right? Wait, how, how did you invert it? Um, I, I don't see your covering. Ah, I'm covering, okay, so I'm, I'm gonna move away. <laughs> All right. So what I did, I wrote the minus one and minus two in one's complement, and then I tried to to actually add them up. So this is what I ended up with. Seems like there are no problems. Now I accept that there's this extra bit that's also one, whatever that means. Uh, and then I tried to convert this one to a, to actual decimal value, and. Uh, since the first bit is is one, this should be negative number. So therefore, we need to do one's complement once again. We invert it to get the positive one, and that's zero one zero zero, and that in binary is the same as four in decimal, right? So turns out minus one and minus two is if we add them together, the result is minus four, and that is not correct. Okay, so this is again not good. Not good. Okay. <clears throat> now there's another approach which is biased and we're going to talk about it a bit more in detail.
But the idea there is that if we have all the unsigned numbers starting from zero, what we could do when we start talking about negative numbers or numbers with a sign, we could just move this zero, you know, um, we could move the zero to the right to somewhere in, in the middle. Let's say these are all the numbers that we can represent in the number of given number of bits, right? So we could move zero to, to somewhere here, right? And we're going to assume that this is sort of the zero point, even though this might be, let's say, 128 as a value. So then what we say is that that bias is equal 128. So every value that we actually want to work with is going to have 128 added to it. And then the addition and subtraction would work just fine, except the values would also be bi biased, the results, right? We would have to convert them back. So the good news is the math works. The bad news is that still, in order to you know print them or to figure out what the actual value is, we need to adjust for the bias. So it's not as, as, as convenient. And finally, there's this two's complement. Sometimes we just call it a complement uh, which is going to be the, the approach that seems to be working fine from different perspectives, and that's actually used in most of the computers today. Okay. So now let's look, look a bit more detail okay, about representing sing sign numbers in n-bit registers. So remember, we need to specify how many bits are there in the register so that we, we know, for example, if we say that the leftmost bit is the sign, where is that leftmost bit? We also need to figure out how much space is there for the value. Okay, If we have uh, three bits for the value, then how many values, you know, what's the interval of, of values that we can store? In three bits, so in binary, that would be two to the power of three different combinations, so it's eight. So I could do eight different values in those three bits. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, right? So eight different values. We cannot do more in three bits. And then we have another bit for the sign. Sign. Right? Altogether, that would be four bits. That would be one approach. In, with the sign and magnitude. Uh, so therefore, if we look at minus three in a four bit register, that would be, this is the value of three, one, one, right? And this is the sign, sign. One meaning minus, zero meaning plus. So it's easy to, to write, it's easy to convert between positive and negative. That's the good news. The math does not work as we as we just saw earlier. So the arithmetic does not work, the simple addition. Um, so not so good. Now for once complement the same story, uh, easy to convert, uh, the math is a mess, right? In some cases it works, and, and but there are cases where we get weird results, right? But then again, if we want to convert minus three in a four bit register, that would be one, one, zero, zero. And that's because three is equal zero zero one one right and minus three would be inverting that so it's one one zero zero all right now uh, with a shift so that that would be biased okay so biased is some, some something that we you know shift the value in our case, we shift the position of the zero on, on the axis of where the, all the numbers are. So just like I draw earlier, let's say there is this axis and it used to have zero here. So this is the old zero and had, let's say, um, 128 during the unsigned. So that's unsigned. 
But for the bias, we take the zero and we shift it here. So now here we have zero, sorry, zero. Uh, let me clean it here. So this is going to be biased. We're going to have 250, uh, sorry, here we had 255 as the largest number that we could store in eight bits, in eight bits. Remember, we always need to know how many bits are we using in the register so that our discussion makes sense. And now if we have it in a biased version, then what's the maximum positive number? Well, we only have half of them that we had before. So it's going to be half of the 255. So it's going to be 127 plus right and here the 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 minus is going to be minus 128 so that's the range of the numbers that we could store using the bias right? so the good news is that the arithmetics work why does it work because you know it's like uh, if we place numbers on on this axis and if we try to add them up uh, we can move uninterrupted over this axis left and right if we add we just add the intervals together right and we end up with something bigger this one plus this one is gonna be uh, you know this is just about this this big no problem if we talk about negative numbers uh, so we just subtract, so we move left, and again, it works fine. So the arithmetic intuitively should should work, right? But it's still not so convenient, because if we want to grab the actual value, if we see 128, that means 0. If we see 129, that would mean 1. So it's not as obvious, especially for, for some numbers down the road. Uh, so we probably could come up with something better. The shift is a good idea for the arithmetic. So maybe we can keep that. Enter two's complement. So two's complement is actually doing the same thing, except you could sort of think of this interval as a wrapped around so that zero starts at zero, right? So that if we had this biased uh, version, we could take this guy and, you know, we could sort of wrap it around, okay? It's not very clear what I mean by this, probably right now, right? But let's see how it works. So. The premise is, for the tools complement, that the following have to hold true. That if we take a value, any number k, that, uh, that we want to represent in n-bit register, then using this representation, adding these numbers must add to 2 to the power of n, right? So if we add... 1 plus minus 1 in this notation, the result must be 2 to the power of n for the n bit bit register or for the n bit, uh, bit uh, binary number. So let's say if n is equal to 8, then minus 1 plus 1 should be equal to 2 to the power of 8. Should be equal to 256. Okay. Now, what is 256 in 8 bits? The, the, the funny thing is that it does not fit in, in 8 bits. We need 9 bits. So, 256 in binary would be 1, 1, 0, 3, 4, 1, 0, 3, 4. So, 8 zeros and one bit here. Now, if we add two numbers, positive and negative, we're going to end up 
possibly with with this carry with this overflow bit but the eight bits that we see in an eight bit register they are still going to be zero so it's sort of an illusion that the result is zero but it's a very useful illusion for two's complement okay so that's why two's complement is going to work for the math uh, and also the conversion is going to be very easy for the positive numbers we're going to see them exactly as they are for the negative numbers we're going to need to do some work to convert them to something useful right but that's the the core idea behind the two's complement are there any questions or comments maybe all right so two's complement in n-bit registers so as discussed earlier it is important for us to know how how long the register is how many bits do we have in the register right because if we have that right then we know that non-negative you could say positive and zero number in n bits the largest that we could is between zero and two to the n minus k and why is that because for the positive numbers we're gonna have n minus one bits because for the negative numbers this bit is going to be one all the time and we need to talk about all right so what's the biggest value non-negative value that we can fit in n minus one bits and that really is two to the n minus one minus one now for the negative number we have all the rest of the numbers that we could uh, store in these n bits right so that would be 2 to the n minus 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1 right so this is pretty much copied from here so therefore the, the result here is going to be 2 to the n minus 1 that's how many negative numbers we can store right so that's why the interval is going to be from minus 2 to the n minus 1 till minus 1 right okay so let's say if n is equal to 8 that means we're going to have uh, um, so 2 to the 8 is equal to 256 we are going to have, you know, 2 to the 7, which is 128 non-negative numbers and also 128 negative numbers. Therefore, in 8 bits, so in 8 bits, we can store minus 128 till 127 so these are the values that we can store in eight bits using two's complement all right now one useful property is that n minus one bit or n minus first bit how is it properly in english huh. n minus one n minus first uh -huh. <laughs> Any yes, cut? Like, no, no, okay, so this is a good question for for English uh, majors. Like last, last two years, like that. So this is no, this is real n minus one bit is the first bit, the most significant bit. If we have uh one zero 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 one one zero one, for example, right? So then this is the n minus oneth bit because this is the zeroth bit this is the first the second and so on right all together we have n bits n bits so this bit is going to signify is going to tell us whether the value is positive or negative so there's a quick way to figure out whether the value, whether the number is positive or negative, whether the value for it is, right? 
And if it's positive, if it's zero, then the value for it, so for example, zero, 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 one. So that is positively equal to one in, dec in decimal, right? Now, what if the number is one, 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 one? Well, that, as we will see, is minus one in decimal. And how do I see this? Because if I add them together, then the result is one plus one is zero. So there's a carry. Carry plus one is zero. 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 And there's a carry. And this carry results in one. So we end up with eight zeros. Eight zeros. Right? So this is pretty much n zeros. And one one. So this value is actually 2 to the n. As per the requirement up above here. Then the sum of positive and negative value of the same value should result in 2 to the n. Right? So this is fine for the 2's complement. And the addition seems to work for the negative and positive numbers. Right? And it will also work, as it turns out, for, for any numbers. Positive and positive, negative and negative, positive and negative, negative and positive, small values, large values, and so on. Right? It's going to be a little bit trickier to figure out when we have overflow, because carry now does not mean an overflow. We had the carry here, but it didn't mean it, there's an overflow. The result was still a valid result that fit in 8 bits. Right? So for the overflow, we would have to check uh, whether the carry is equal to the sign bit. But we're going to have the discussion about it a little bit later. All right? So the same for the hexadecimal numbers. Right? How do we figure out if we talk about hexadecimal numbers? So remember the hexadecimal numbers as opposed to binary went from the digits were from 0, 1, 2 till 9. Then we had A, B and, and so on till F. Right. So altogether we have 16 dif digits. And we can also talk about 2's complement in hexadecimal. All we need to do is sort of to convert binary that's in two's complement to a hexadecimal directly, right? Remember, every four bits in binary is good for uh, are good for uh, one digit in hexadecimal. That's the basic idea, right? But the uh, the the by definition would be that let's say we start. Uh, with the assumption that we have n byte register and we have a positive number, well, non negative number because it could also be zero, k, how do we convert it to a uh, two's complement? Convert to hexadecimal system, okay. We pad it with zeros on the left so that we have two n hexadecimal digits. So, what that means is that if we have, let's say, one, two in hexadecimal in 16 right and we want to do it in in uh, let's say n is equal to um, 16 so that's a two bytes two bytes 16 bits so then we need to pad this guy with zeros from the left and that's we, how we get 16 bits and that's two's complement in hexadecimal for 12 in hexadecimal right now if the number does not fit in hex 2n hexadecimal digits uh, so actually here I need to be careful so here n is is not so it, uh, 16 bits means that we actually have let me clean this 
so which is the same as two bytes right? in two bytes we can have four hex digits right twice as many because every byte has eight bits and four bits is how much we need for one hexadecimal digit right so that's why this n byte this goes here right and this is equal to 2n right so that's why we need the 2n hex digits here all right now what if the number does not fit in 2n hexadecimal digits let's say we want to say one two three four five in in hex and we want to store that in two bytes so two bytes means we have one two three four two n is equal to four digits right and it does not fit right so what do we do with this guy well the number is too big for n's complement then unfortunately right it does not fit we have an overflow okay now what if we want to do the same for the negative num number okay and the story is is similar the algorithm is is very similar so we assume that we had the n byte register and the negative number k minus k that we want to store all right uh, we're going to convert the absolute val value of, of k to the hexadecimal system, right? So let's say, let's say that the k is equal to 1, and we want to see what minus k is going to be in hexadecimal hex. All right? So then the first one is to convert k in, he in hexadecimal, right and and so k you know is equal to one and in hexadecimal let's say we have two bytes therefore one is going to be equal to zero 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 one in two bytes right one byte the second byte and now we need to subtract the k from this number right so we need to subtract one zero 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 minus zero 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 one in order to get the value in two's complement so what is the result zero minus one we need to borrow one so it's going to be one uh zero minus um I mean, one minus zero, uh, sorry, zero minus one, the one that we just borrowed, right? So it's gonna be one, we need to borrow, same story here, same story here, and here we can borrow this, so so this, this disappears. So the result in hexadecimal, again, is one, 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 one. I'm sorry, it's not one, 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 one. I need to start over. Because I told you a wrong thing. I'm too used to the binary system. Sorry about that. It is important to notice that we are talking about a hexadecimal, hexadecimal here. So therefore, when we borrow one here, right? Uh, and if we try to subtract it from, let's say, from the 10, then here the result is not going to be one the result is going to be f because f plus one is going to be 10 and by the same token here again if we need to borrow one and we need to actually calculate 10 minus one here so the result is going to be f and it's going to be f here and it's going to be f here right so this is minus one is equal FFFF in hex. Okay. 
And if we were to convert that to binary, it would be 1111, in binary, right? Because F is the same as 1111. In two's complement, that's minus one, in two's complement in binary and in hex, hexadecimal using two bytes. So that's always important to know how much space do we have. Any questions? Maybe? All right, so uh, too small for n bytes in complement. So this is to figure out what if, how do we figure out whether the number is too small, meaning too far negative in its value. The absolute value is too large for it to fit as a negative number using two's complement in n bits, right? Okay, so now there are some examples. How do we do this? We take 293 and V2 means, okay, so V2 means that 2 is 2 bytes, 2 byte register. That's what this 2 means. Okay, and also this too. Okay. Now in two bytes, how can we fit this? 293 in 10 is 125 in 16. So this you should be able to convert just like during the quiz today, right? <clears throat> Once we have that, then it's a, it's a positive number in two bytes, it easily fits. What if it's a negative number? What do we do then? Well, then again, we get the absolute value. It's 125. And then we subtract this value from this guy, right? So 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 125. And as we subtract, we can see that here again, we need to borrow 1, so 10 minus 5, 10 minus 5 is equal to, to what? So this should be actually like so. 8. 10 minus 5 is, is 8? No, 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 A. Is A, right? So 10 minus 5 is the same because this is in hex, right? is the same as 16 minus 5 in decimal is 10, which is exactly 8, as you said, in hex. Okay. So that, uh, or is it? Oh, wait, wait, I'm sorry, it's B. I, I subtracted <laughs> it from F, not from 16. Okay, is it B really? Yeah. So let's double it's check. 11. Let's double check. Uh, so it is 16, we had to subtract 5, so this should be B, B. Seems like it, B. Okay, let's write B here. And since we borrowed here this guy, so now we're going to have to do, again, 10 to the 16 minus 1 plus 2, so meaning 1 plus 3. So how much is it? So this is going to be D. All right, so this is D, okay. We had to borrow once again, so now it's going to be 10 to the 16 minus 1, which is easy. F. Which is F, it seems to be F, right? Um, 
but we actually have to subtract two because we borrowed one and there is one as well so this is actually two so therefore it's not going to be f but it's going to be e i hope you're following right right we had to borrow one yeah and there is one so it's two altogether so it's going to be e right and once again now we had to borrow because there was zero and there's nothing nothing here so therefore we indeed can do 10 16 minus 1 and that is indeed f as you mentioned before so this is f and here we had to borrow this guy so 1 minus 1 is 0 right so this is the result and what's missing here is one digit b b right so there's a typo on the slide apparently uh, there's a story behind why there is a typo because using the math and backslash b that converts to something else and becomes invisible but anyway i need to fix that on the slides all right so this is how we calculate this this is the result for uh, minus 293 in decimal or minus 125 in hex this is how it looks like in two's complement. Okay. So there are some exercises that you could do. Again, we're looking at the values in two bytes, right? So we have altogether 16 bits. Bits. Or four uh hexadecimal digits what's the value for zero well it's all zeros zero 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 altogether four what's the value for one it's a positive number so it's easy it's going to be zero 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 one it's the same value as for the non <laughs> without a sign unsigned minus one so for the minus one um I already know for and we did a little chat that for the minus one so minus one in binary is going to be one 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 so that's in two bytes right so therefore I can write f f f f soon enough you're gonna remember that minus one is all f's <coughs> in two's complement now what is this number two three two seven six seven so this number turns out to be two to the eight minus one minus one right two to the sixteenth probably you're you're right this is sixteenth right i missed by one byte okay so that is in hex seven f f f so these are all ones but here we have zero one 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 if if we look at bitwise meaning that this is the largest positive number that we can store in two bytes using two's complement so the first bit is zero and all the rest of the bits are ones all right so by a similar token we can look at this guy so this guy is minus 2 to the 16 minus 1 so this is going to be the largest negative number that we can store so therefore it's going to be 1 0 0 0 not 1 8 0 0 0 why 8 because it's 8 is 1 0 0 0 in binary Okay, and the rest are zero, 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 zero. So this is the largest negative number that we can store. Now and finally, what about this guy in two bytes? So this guy is one bigger than that guy. And that guy was already the largest we can store. So this guy therefore is not gonna fit. Does not in two bytes make sense 
Yes. Okay, good. All right, so, and, and there are the solutions <coughs> that I have written out. Um, already there are some more exercises so now what about four so four bytes right what's going to change so in four bytes zero is still going to be zero 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 so that's in hex now right one is going to be still zero 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 one right minus one is going to be guess what all f's Okay, because what if we convert that to binary? Well, it's all ones. And then this guy finally fits. Remember, this guy did not did not fit because it was by one too large than the maximum we can fit in two bytes. So here it should fit. And the value of it is going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 0, 0. No, I'm wrong. Zero, zero, and then eight, eight. zero, yeah. zero, zero. Right, because this eight is one zero 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 in binary, and then these guys are just zero zero. So here we can afford to have this most significant bit as one because it's not really the most significant bit we have more space now we have more bits in four bytes and we can fit this value now so now it's fine okay so here are the answers in a pretty print <clears throat> how do we find the actual value of two's complement so in binary version let's see uh, we do the following algorithm. Okay, first, if we have a binary number given, and we need to figure out a value, and whether it's positive or negative, and the actual value for the number, we we'll look at the m most significant bit first. Is this one? Because that is going to tell us the sign. Okay. So if it's one, then the sign is minus. And then we take these guys and, uh, and what do we do? We take these guys we pretty much we subtract from this binary number that binary number. So this is essentially the same as 2 to the power of n minus that number k that we started with, right? <clears throat> and that's how we're going to get the value of a negative 2's complement number. Now, if, if the first bit was not 1, so if it was 0, so then the sign is positive, and then we don't really do need to do anything. So that's the same binary value as the number in two's complement so for positive numbers no need to do anything for negative we need to do a little bit of subtraction okay and once we're done with that then we can convert k to decimal and then we get we're gonna get the value for it and add the sign of course right so the sign goes from from either here or from either here depending on what was the case before. So that's the algorithm, how to deal with it. Okay. <clears throat> so the same story goes about the hexadecimal version, right? Except that we're going to have, instead of binary, uh, we're going to have, you know, bigger digits. And we need to compare the most significant digit, whether it's greater than one, 7. Why is it 7? Because 7 is 0, 1, 1, 1. In the essence, we still compare to the most significant bit, right? So this is the sign bit, and then we have the rest of the number, right? And the story is just as for the binary numbers. 
then the sign is negative. If it's not one, then if it's not greater than seven, then the sign is positive. And we do the same algorithm here. We need to subtract uh, two to the power of two n, where n is the digits, number of digits, number of bytes, not bits, right? That's why it's 2n. And we subtract that value, okay. And we convert it to decimal, and we add the sign, right? Same thing. All right. So that was a mouthful, right? That was not so simple and easy to follow, perhaps, right? Is there an easier way? And turns out there is, okay? And we're going to talk about how to, how to compute that. Uh, there could be a more direct formula. So this formula is is similar to the one that we had in the first lecture, I believe, when we talked about the, the binary representation. With the exception that this very first bit we're going to take with a minus sign. And then the rest of them we just add up using the, the powers of 2. So this is 2 is 2 to the 1. This is times 2 to the 0 and till 2 to the n minus 2 and then minus here. So this should work for 2's complement because of the premise that the k plus minus k must be equal to 2 to the n. Right? If you represent k and minus k using the definitions of 2's complement, then you're going to end up that this is the formula. So it's a little bit better maybe, but there's still a lot of additions to be done. So it's not so easy. So it turns out there's a trick to take advantage of one's complement, right? And the trick is, the algorithm is, if we wanna convert a negative number to a positive using two's complement, all we do is we calculate one's complement, we invert all the bits, and then we add one. As simple as that. Okay. For example, if we have minus one, so in binary that would be one, 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 in, in one byte. Okay. In one byte. In one byte, right? <laughs> Using this algorithm, first we do the ones complement. All right, so we invert all the digits and then we do plus one. So we add one here and the result's going to be zero, 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 one. Fine, looks good. Let's say we have another number. Let's say we have one, 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 zero, zero, or zero, 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 right. Let's do it this way. What do we do now? Well, the same thing. First we invert, so it's gonna be zero, 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 one, one. And then we do plus one, right? So one plus one is zero. So there's a carry. Carry plus one is zero. And, uh, right? Yes. Right. Except, except now I, I'm not adding to this guy. I'm adding to, to that guy. I, I, I don't quite follow what, what I'm doing now. Okay, so let me do it once again. So what I'm doing is I'm what, following what doing? these steps. This is one and this is two, right? And I'm saying that what if I start with the number zero, 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 sorry. 
1111111100. And the purpose is to, con to find if this is a minus k in 2's complement. So then what is k? That's the purpose of the algorithm, to convert from negative number in 2's complement to a positive, to figure out what the value of it is, for example, right? And according to this algorithm, so the first step is to invert this guy. So that's 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. And then the second step is to add 1 for it, to it. All right? So let's add 1 plus 1 is 0, one, 1 carry. 1 plus 1 is 0, and 1 carry. Carry plus 0 is 1, no carries. And all the rest are zeros. So that's the value. So which is 4 in decimal. So therefore, this guy was minus 4 in decimal. Minus 4 in decimal is the same as here. So 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So that's the example of of, of converting. Okay. Converting. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. So, so the good properties of two's complement. To sum it up, why do we love it so much in in, in computer hardware and and uh, the addition is very simple. There's no need to worry about the sign bit. We can add unsigned numbers and signed numbers using the same hardware. There's no extra overhead, nothing extra to pay, right? So we can just pretend that's unsigned addition. And we can also carry the uh, ignore the carry bit, right? So we can sort of ignore the, the overflow situation here. The subtraction is just as simple right not to worry about anything we just do it the usual way all right uh, the overflow is a little bit trickier how could you get an overflow so if we did you know plus one and minus one so that would be I'm gonna use just four bits now okay so this is one zero zero one and one 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 so then the result is, was 0, 0, 0, 0, and 1 here. So there was a carry. So there is a carry. Carry is 1. But overflow, there is no overflow. So no. No overflow. Everything is fine. We got 0. Even though there was a carry. right? For the unsigned, that would be an overflow. Okay, so what if we add um, two large positive numbers? Let's say I'm going to add the biggest positive number in four bits is 0, 1, 1, 1, right? And I'm going to add plus 1 just to see what happens when we are out of bounds. So then the result is going to be 0 here, carry, 0 here, carry, 0 here, carry, and 0 here, I'm sorry, 1 here, and no carry. So there is no carry. And that bit, the most significant bit of the, the digit is 0. Okay, it's equal to zero, right? And here the so we, we received like negative number, but we received like negative number, so there is a problem. So apparently, there is overflow, so there is overflow, yes. So we need to sort of check what to do with this situation. Uh, what else could we do? <clears throat> we could add two small numbers, let's say 0001 and 0001. Then the result is going to be 0100. And there is no carry again, just as before. 
and there is no overflow. What no. is carry? Carry is when you add one and one, then you need to carry one bit to the left. I'll, I'll wait. Well, for one bit. And then in this case, there is no carry in this case. So this is the last carry that I'm talking oh, about, okay. right? The leftmost carry. We had one here. Okay, carry. Mm -hmm. Carry. But no carry here. So, and no overflow. So this seems to be fine. Right? What else could there be? We could have two very large negative numbers. So I could have the largest negative number that I can write is one zero zero zero, right? <coughs> Which is equal to minus eight, I believe, right? And I could add another one, minus one. Okay. And that will kick me out of the of the eight bits. So let's see what happens. One plus one plus zero is one, one, one. And now we have a carry. So one and one here. So we have a carry here. Right. So there is carry and there is also overflow. Yes. So we have two cases when we have overflow. And how can we detect those cases? Um, what can we note? In one case, the carry was one, and here the carry was zero. So we cannot tell it by carry. Well, but what we could look at, though, is whether the carry is the same as the n minus first bit, as the leftmost bit of the result. Right? So in this case, the carry was. So basically, I'm trying to read this, this rule, right? In two's complement has overflow if the carry of n minus one bit differs from the disposable carry after n minus one bit. Right? So in this case, indeed, there is zero here. And uh, there's carry. They are not the same, so therefore there's going to be an overflow. In this case, um, there is one here, and then there is zero here. And they are not the same. So we have a problem. We, we have an overflow. In this case, there is no carry and and there is zero as well. So therefore, we have no problem. Okay, so we need to do a little bit of more checking in hardware apparently uh, to figure out when we have carry and when we don't ha when we have the overflow and when we don't have the overflow. Luckily for us, in the processor, uh, this is already done, and uh, you know. Uh, we can easily check using the commands as we're going to see in the assembly language to figure out whether we had overflow or not. Okay, one last thing I believe to talk about, or one before last, is about the endianness of the systems. So if we look at numbers of memory, we they may fit in, in several bytes. We could have, I'm going to write in hex, okay? One, two, three, four, so that's two bytes. 5, 6, 7, 8, for example, right? So that's 4 bytes. 4 bytes. I could say 0x in front of it to make sure this is a hex, right? How do we store that in memory? Which, you know, 1, 2, this byte, where does it go? Does it go at, with the least address or with the most address? With the smallest or with the largest address, right? And turns out there are computers that use both of these systems. That's what they call the big endian or the little endian system. 
So in big endian, the bytes of the number assume the natural order in the memory. Right? So the number starts with the big end with the most significant byte, just as we write it here. So here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight would go in the memory in the same order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No surprises here. So the word address is the address of the most significant byte. So basically this is the word address. Word address. Right? And the word is usually four bytes long, right? Because it fits in the instruction register, it fits in, uh, in all the registers, four byte registers. <clears throat> Now, in contrast, for the little endian system, the order of bytes is reversed, right? So if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, then it's going to be reversed. We're going to start with the seven, eight in the first address. Then we're going to have five, six. Then we're going to have three, four. And then we're going to have one, two. And guess what? This is most likely how your computer is doing it. If you are uh, using a computer that's that's based on x86, right? <clears throat> so the little end, the least significant byte, is being used as the first one, right? So this is the little end. And one reason for using this system is so that we can do quick conversion between data types of different size without changing the address. So let's say we have a very small number, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, uh, 9, 9, for example, right? This is the value. And then using the little endian in the memory, it would be 9, 9, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, okay? If we are talking about the word, then we take the whole thing, which is fine. But what if we want to convert that to a two byte value, right? Then we don't have to change the address. We can use the same address here and we're going to end up with the same value here. There's no need to do any conversion or shifting or anything. So that's one reason why Little Endian has, has become so popular, right? If we were to use the big endian, then we would have to sort of shift the address over there and, and deal with, okay, what what's up with the first two bytes? If we ignore, whether we ignore them or is this a free memory or not or so on, right? So that's, that's one reason for the little endian. If we look at the, you know, real systems, x86, probably the most pro popular architecture nowadays for desktop machines for laptops is using little endian right although nowadays we are also using arm computers uh, m1 chip um, uh, the apple's laptops the latest apple laptops are using arms uh, so this might be different uh, but i think they are also using little endian now the mainframes and the Motorola 680 family are using the big Endian. So that's that's sort of the long time ago, right? The more recently, we're still using little Endian on x86 architectures. Uh, if you're looking at the Unix system processors uh, for for some machines, which are also becoming old actually, and some other. They are using the big endian. And also when we are talking about how do we send bytes over the network, which is another question. What if we have two computers and we need to send a bunch of bytes over the network, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine, nine A, for example, right? <clears throat> we need to decide, you know, whether the most significant bit is gonna uh, byte is going to go first or the least significant byte and the decision is to use big endian for the byte order sometimes we need to convert 
from little to big endian so that we can send the information over the network so that's called the data marshalling by the way okay and the interesting thing is that arm can actually switch between the two systems but we will adopt the little endian mode uh, in this course for the arm assembly language uh, and x86 is using that as well so so that's the story here and that's about all that i was going to tell you today about the tools complement in summary uh, remember that we can store positive and negative numbers we want to store in hardware in order to do that we need to fix what is the size of the array or rather the size of the register or size of the memory where we want to store that number okay and only then we can talk about okay if we're using two's complement which seems to be the most practical approach because it preserves the arithmetic operations we can easily do that without worrying whether it's positive or negative number right and the conversion is not too bad either using one's complement um, <clears throat> so that seems to be the most popular way to store negative numbers when we need to the only price we pay obviously is the maximum values that we can store for the negative and positive numbers right <clears throat> we can go only from 2 to the power of minus n to the power of so from minus 2 to the power of n minus 1 till 2 to the power of n minus 1 minus 1 and minus 1 okay but you know we only have so many bits and we can use half of them not half of the bits but half of the values can be negative and half of the values roughly can be positive and zero so that's where these two numbers are coming from okay all right so that's all i'm have to say for this and i'm going to wish you good luck studying how to store uh, negative numbers do we have